nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. So welcome everyone. I'm going to give a simpler overview of how we use uh, NanoHub in the course that we teach, which is a laboratory course. It's a junior level course in electronic materials. So I'm showing you now our Canvas page. And when you go into our Canvas page, you can click the link and it takes you to the main page on electronic materials. Now, in our laboratory, the students are taking concurrent core classes. We have our students are in a cohort, so they're all taking the same classes at the same time they're taking the lab. So we designed the laboratory to support core ideas in their uh, classes. So when they're taking an e-materials course, we're doing electronic materials labs that align with the course. So they have objectives and they have to-dos, and so as part of their learning mix experience, they have some background reading. They're going to do a nano hub simulation. This year we had to run our laboratory virtually, which I'll show you, but normally they would do a laboratory that's set up to uh, look for the band gap in LEDs. And we look at the temperature dependence of the band gap in LEDs. So we have an electronic lab that they do and so we use um, Arduinos um, to collect some data. Uh, we give them a little bit of background on the laboratory. Uh, we go through, most students have not taken circuits. We use a power supply and we're gonna collect data so that we can determine the cutoff voltage in the LED and um, be able to check that against uh, the materials that are used in the LED. So to do that, we have uh, a lab that we use. We use the resource called the PN Junction Lab. So one of the things we're doing in our courses now is we're using more computational tools uh, for students to have a simulation that gets tied to an experiment so we can create sort of a, a broader picture of what materials engineers do. And so we use the PN Junction tool, which was just recently republished. And so when you look at the tool, the tool itself has quite a bit to it. Uh, it's got uh, different energy uh, band considerations. Uh, it's not as complicated a tool as a tool that LAND demoed, but it's a tool that's certainly appropriate for use with students. Uh, to utilize that, uh, one thing that we found with NanoHub is that some of the resources are really powerful, but they don't necessarily come with tutorials or how-tos, so we designed a NanoHub tutorial for our students to work through, and they looked at intrinsic properties, and then we looked, uh, we have them sketch out what they think is gonna happen, and then we look at what is the PN junction, and they make a prediction, and then we're gonna go to the NanoHub tutorial to show them how to use that to look at the effect of doping and temperature on um, the electronic properties of the materials. So I wrote this tutorial to go along with the lab. And uh, again, we show them the basics, how to get into the settings, how to change the different parameters, which parameters should be changed. And then uh, we have them start with silicon. We first do the intrinsic. We ask some questions about the intrinsic semiconductor. And then we go to the extrinsic semiconductor where we start to look at doping. And then they're going to run NanoHub to look at doping. And then we take it as an application to LEDs. So hopefully uh, by the time they go through this, they have some understanding within the PN junction uh, what's going on inside the material. And what we like about this is that the students, depending on uh, their level, uh, can do some fairly complicated uh, simulations. So you can change the structure. So we generally, in our labs, we change with the ex uh, acceptor and donor concentration. You can change the material. So now you can do silicon, germanium, gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, and then you can also change the temperature environment and the applied voltage. And so our students find this uh, really uh, useful. We find that students struggle with the band gap and really understanding band gap diagrams. 
Uh, additionally, it helps them understand the IV characteristics, which is what they're going to do in the lab. And when students collect the data, they're actually able to uh, plot this and find the cutoff voltage. Now, again, we used to do this by hand, but now we're actually doing it. We just wrote a Jupyter notebook that brings in a data set and actually has them run. Now, the Jupyter notebook is uh, being published right now on NanoHub, and the Jupyter notebook has, again, a background on the PN junction. Um, it's got how you can determine the band gap using the voltage. It gives an experiment, uh, an experimental summary of how we collected the data. Uh, we go through that, and then we show them uh, in the Jupyter notebook how to bring in the data, how to calculate the current. So we sort of back calculate out the current from the circuit, how to take that data and how to plot it. And then uh, for some reason, my widgets aren't working. I have a new computer and just reloaded Anaconda, but you can actually fit the data and they have to use the widget to slide the sliders so that you can do the fitting parameter and it'll actually find the cutoff voltage in the different LEDs. So we use different color LEDs. We do them at room temperature and we do them again at liquid nitrogen temperature and they fit each one, and then we show them how to um, plot them simultaneously into a nice sort of plot package down here. And these are actually fit properly because uh, I ran them on my other computer. Um, and so here you can see how the student will find the fit. They can back out the cutoff voltage. Then we have them table the data, so we create a, a data frame. And then we can find where the turn on voltage is, what the calculated wavelength would be, and how that compares to the published wavelength for the LED. And so um, this lab would sort of be a simulation, then they would run it again for the cold temperature data. And then the students write a technical report and they explain the phenomena of what the cutoff voltage look like for room temperature data versus what happens when you go to low temperature and you have anomalous effects in the LEDs because of the band gap changing um, due to temperature. And so the students do a discussion and an analysis of this and it, we take it to why when we go to an extreme environment like Mars or the moon, you may not be able to use the same LEDs that you do on Earth. And so that's sort of our guiding question. So that's a brief overview of how we use NanoHub in terms of a, a companion to a laboratory so that we can bring together simulation and experimental data. And so we would have the students do a simulation of what the band gap would be in NanoHub and then they run the experiment and they use uh, the theoretical values, the uh, experimental values and the published values from the LED manufacturers. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. Thank you, Nancy.